1040, welcome back. A medical update for you this morning. If you or a loved one suffer with Parkinson's disease, our guests today have some hopeful news on how to manage the disease. We are joined now from the Hospital for Special Care, Dr. Adrian Chan, along with physical therapist Dorothy Villano. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Now, this is a disease that does affect a number of people. Dr. Chan, if you could just start uh, by explaining to me, to the viewers, really what is Parkinson's disease? Right. So, Parkinson's disease is pretty common. Um, it's characterized by tremors, stiffness, slowness of movement, and a, usually a typical shuffling gait. Uh, not everyone has the same type of symptoms, but you know, if you have a combination of these different symptoms, and you know, you could be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Okay, and now, Dorothy, I know at the Hospital for Special Care, you do treat a number of people with this disease, and while certain symptoms like the fatigue aren't fully treatable, there are ways to make it more manageable for people. Right, and one of the most important things we do is um, meet the person where they are, find out what their strengths are, find out what they like to do, and then build from there to teach them that physical activity can be just as valuable as regular exercise. It's a form of exercise. So physical activity is a big one. Uh, and I know obviously focusing on sleep and routines is a part of it as well. Th that's definitely true. And Dr. Chan um, right. frequently. Yeah, I think uh, we want to make sure that they also take the medication on time, uh, which is can be a problem for some people probably because they may forget or they are in a nursing home that's a big problem sometimes they don't get mm -hmm. the right amount of medication at the right time but you know they by taking all the medication regularly they, they optimize for the treatment so to reduce a lot of the symptoms they can have and now at your hospital I know there's really a, a team based based approach obviously the doctors physical therapists occupational therapists all work together uh, what do you think is the benefit of this well, that's a good point. Um, I think uh, we all work together as a team. It means that each of us would be able to address different things, uh, you know, differently. Uh, I, I'm the medical doctor, so I usually manage the medication, and Dorothy is a therapist, and we often communicate to each other regarding the same patients, you know, what we need to do for him or her um, to get a more, I guess, a specialized and specific approach to uh, the patient's needs rather than just getting some random generic treatment for everyone. Right. It's, it's nice to have that all under one roof, too. Um, so, Dorothy, you are a physical therapist. Talk to us about what goes into creating a plan for someone with Parkinson's. Well, Parkinson's has many impacts on the patient. They have stooped posture, muscular stiffness, balance problems, and sometimes that fatigue takes over and people become more and more sedentary. So one of the important things that we, we try to do is teach people to take note and take stock of their daily activities and maybe even use an activity monitor such as an, you know, a, a fitness watch to try to build in more activity throughout the day and then from there build on that strength to help them develop an exercise program in addition to gait training and balance training and strength training. And this I would imagine takes you know a, a while to get a grasp of so yes. the sooner the better after a diagnosis. Yes, yes. I think a long time ago it was earlier in the disease that mm -hmm. maybe people didn't get therapy as soon as they do now. Right. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful that the resources are available, especially at the Hospital for Special Care. And doctor, I just want to get this information out to our viewers as well watching. Um, those symptoms to look out for, maybe they think someone in their life may have Parkinson's. What should people really be focusing on? Yeah, definitely there are patients uh, people who have had the symptoms for a number of years before they seek medical help. Um, and it's important to get the diagnosed earlier because the earlier you treat in general, the better they will do later on. Um, so some symptoms would be, well, trauma is probably the most common one that people can notice, and that's not a big problem. They would usually, you know, find somebody to, to you know, to, to see if that's been treated. But for s more subtle symptoms, they will be like slowness, um, or just not really moving as fast as they should, or the voice getting really weaker and weaker. A lot of time people think it's just old age, uh, especially for older patients, but it, it's often not normal for, you know, even for that age to have slower than usual movements or right. with a weak voice or the gait is kind of shuffling and slow, you know, maybe a little bit imbalanced. Those are subtle signs that they should really 
need to address to find a medical health care. Yeah, really you important know. to keep in mind for people in your life. But the hopeful news that you gave us today is that there are ways to manage uh, and mitigate those symptoms. So we appreciate your time today. Of course, uh, if you at home would like to learn more, we will have all of the details on our website, WTNH.com. We'll be right back.